key check. Hmm. Not too spicy today. Hey. Welcome. How are you? Of course. Come on in. Have a seat. Welcome to Jay's. My name is Jeremiah. Yeah. Hey, how's your day going? Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a very common scenario. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're here. It is my job to, uh, Let's just say ideal in fun and relaxation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, have you been to Jay's before? First time. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what kind of flavors do you like? Okay, okay. Well, you want something kind of fresh and bright. Okay. Uh, um, we feeling vodka, tequila, gin, whiskey, vodka. Okay, great. I'll tell you what, I have just the cocktail. It's called a cucumber jalapeno martini. It is, uh, delicious and refreshing. Um, I think you're gonna love it. You wanna try one? Awesome. Have a seat and uh, let's make you a cocktail. Yeah, so I'm going to start off with about uh, three, about three slices of cucumber. Um, I'm going to use a nice slice of uh, seeded jalapeno. Um, as we just tested, these, these jalapenos are not that spicy today. They can kind of vary. Uh, but I'm going to take uh, about those cucumbers and jalapenos, and I'm just going to muddle them up. So this is a, a muddler, it's just a, a nice little wooden dowel. Um, now, when I did not have a muddler, I even uh, have used the back of a knife before, but if you have a muddler, it does, uh, it does make your life, life easier, and you can muddle from either side. It really it really doesn't matter. So, here we go. Um, yeah, there's different theories on muddling. Some people like to uh, pound this way. Um, I generally am a fan of a deep, slow press like this. Um, I don't want to necessarily pulverize my fruits and vegetables into the cocktail. That's generally not my idea. Um, what I like to do is uh, uh, break up so you have that, that fragrance, that smell, the essence of the cucumber and jalapeno come through in the cocktail. And some ice. and a half of vodka. We're going to do a half ounce of Taiku, which is a green tea citrus liqueur with a very fun glowing bottle. I'm just going to eyeball this half ounce about This cocktail, we're going to use one ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice. And we're going to use one ounce of homemade 
simple syrup. Now, this simple syrup is a bit darker in color. That's because I used organic, unbleached cane sugar um, to make my own house-made simple syrup. So it's not crystal clear because the sugar I used is unbleached, uh, pure organic cane sugar. That like so. with a martini I shake it uh, a longer time as I am really trying to get it nice and cold for you now what we're gonna do is strain out the schmutz with a little strainer on the top a cucumber jalapeno martini. Enjoy. Yeah. Good God, that's delicious. Bravo. Well, I'm very glad you, uh, you enjoyed that. Yeah. Would you care to try something else? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, I know that a lot of people um, are afraid of tequila, and for good reason. Um, we all have our personal horror stories of, uh, <laughs> of drinking tequila in college. But I am here to tell you, <clears throat> as a responsible adult, that uh, tequila can be an absolutely magical mixer not just in margaritas, but in cocktails as well. Uh, but I guess we all generally call most tequila cocktails a variation of a margarita. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me make a couple for you. Um, I'm going to make you a cucumber jalapeno margarita, and then I want to make you a raspberry serrano cilantro margarita. And, uh, you know, you let me know which one you like best. Okay? All right, let's start off with the uh, cucumber jalapeno. <clears throat> so, very similar to the last cocktail. Uh, this time I've just taken uh, the, the, the cucumbers and sliced them in half. Easy done. One wheel of the jalapeno. And just a slow press model. I'm not trying to polarize. I just want to uh, um, get the ingredients nice and and uh, loosened up. Um, so for this one, we're going to use uh, Blanco tequila. Actually, for both cocktails, it'll be a Blanco. And uh, why not go with an absolute tried and true fan favorite of Don Julio Blanco? Um, you know, Don Julio is just a Delicious, always smooth, always on time. Sorry, that sounded horrible. I apologize in advance. Uh, about two ounces, and actually, let's just make sure I get my two ounces correct. Yeah, these Don Julio bottles are a little trickier. That was a strange pour, but that looks like about two ounces. Uh, so, Don Julio, and now we're going to use organic agave nectar. Now, this one, I 
I really have to tell you is an important ingredient. If you plan on using agave nectar, you really want to get this one. Trace agaves, organic agave nectar. I have had uh, many different agave nectars, and I will tell you unequivocally, this one is by far the best. <clears throat> So I'm going to put one ounce of organic agave nectar. I'm going to put in one ounce of fresh squeezed lime. This, by the way, was the juice of about, uh, this bottle here is about 12 to 14 limes, fresh limes. One ounce and one ounce. Nice. <clears throat> and as before, uh, shake, shake, shake. Now for this cocktail, we'll serve it in a little glass. Dirty ice. Add a little bit more ice. And we'll garnish with a lime wheel. Another slice. And that, my friends, is how we make a cucumber jalapeno margarita. Salute. Enjoy. How are we doing? Yeah. So far, so good. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm sorry, you know, I forgot to ask, what's your name? Ah, oh, that's a nice name. Yeah. And what uh, what do you do for work? <laughs> well, I imagine that can be very stressful and uh, quite tiring at times. Yeah. Um, me, I've been bartending for about ten years. The mixology thing, maybe five. Yeah, before that, it was just kind of like this, like regular drinks, not all the fancy muddled stuff. Sure, sure. Um, Want to try something else? Cool. Let's try a raspberry serrano cilantro margarita. Yeah, you want to try one? Okay. Kind of similar to the last one, except for obviously the muddled ingredients. So, we are going to take five fresh, ripe organic raspberries. One, two, three, four, and five. And we are going to take one small slice of the serrano pepper. Now, the serrano pepper is a lot spicier than the jalapeno. So, we're just going to use a uh, smaller bit of the serrano. And we're going to add some cilantro. Uh, do you like cilantro? Okay, I know it's hit or miss. Some people love it, and the other part of the population thinks that it tastes like soap. So it's you can really ruin things with it or not. Um, so yeah, just in the same way, we're going to muddle uh, in that nice, just pressed, just a nice even way. I just want to get the raspberry juices and the serrano, and that cilantro fragrance. Nice and, nice and worked around. Break up that pepper in there to release the spice. And now that we have our, our base, okay? Looks like a nice, kind of like a raspberry, uh, like a raspberry paste. It smells heavenly. Uh, now we add our ice. Don 
Oh yo, right, I'm just gonna free pour this time and I hope I get to about the two ounce mark. I think that's about two ounces. Close enough anyway. And now we're gonna add one ounce fresh lime juice, one ounce. And we're gonna do another uh, ounce of organic, about a half ounce actually this time because the raspberries are sweet. So we're gonna add about a half ounce of organic agave nectar, which is gonna be a boot. That right there. And now we shake. Just like last time. This is this is pretty. Good. I'll serve it in this glass. Beautiful. And what I like to do with my garnishes is I like to put the same uh, garnish in the beverage as I put uh, in the drink. So in this case, I will garnish with a serrano, uh, a raspberry, and I'm going to garnish with a uh, um, lime. Oh, and for margarita, and of course, uh, we wanna garnish with a, uh, a bit of cilantro for uh, aesthetics and flavor. So there you have it, a raspberry serrano cilantro margarita. Cheers. Very curious, you know, which has been your favorite so far? Yeah, it is. It's amazing when you, uh, what you can do when you add cucumber and jalapeno or anything that's um, re refreshing with a little spice and something sweet with something with some acid, some lime or lemon, usually lime in the world of cocktails. But uh, it's truly amazing how that changes things and makes beverages just delicious. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have something a little different that I want to, uh, I want to experiment. Again, we're going to have a base of uh, cucumber and jalapeno, one of my all-time favorite bases. And then we are going to um, make a drink called a Rico, uh, uh, which is going to be with a pear vodka and uh, Saint Germain, which is an edelflower liqueur. Yeah, so, uh, want to try one? That, that is the right answer. Uh, so here we go. We're going to start off with about uh, three to four slices of, uh, of cucumber. I'm going to make this actually a little bit, uh, a little dirtier. So I'm going to go with, uh, with uh, five five slices of the cucumber. Uh, a nice, normal, generous slice of jalapeno goes in there. And as per usual, we are gonna muddle. Uh, muddle, muddle, muddle. So let's muddle. Uh, oh, you're worried if uh, a little bit of the raspberry will affect. You know what? I mean, there's so many other strong flavors that the, the tiny bit of raspberry on there doesn't really make a difference. I seriously doubt you'll taste it. As usual, nice muddle in there. All right, just like so. Yeah. As always, add ice. by not using enough ice 
So the ice is, uh, is necessary. Next, uh, we are going to use uh, vodka. Um, but this is something a bit different. Now, this um, is, they call this absolute juice. So this is a new uh, vodka from Absolute, and I'm not going to lie, I normally wouldn't recommend Absolute as a flavored vodka because uh, they just added, like, um, chemical flavors to make them taste like apple or whatever flavor they were. Uh, this, I believe, is their actual attempt at infusion. Um, and I will say, this... Um, this is delicious. So this actually is a combination of um, uh, pear and edelflower. And Saint Germain is edelflower liqueur. So normally um, we would just use a pear vodka with Saint Germain. In this case, uh, we have a bit of both. So I'm going to use more of this, more of the, uh, more of the absolute pear edelflower and a little less of the Saint Germain. So I'm actually going to go a full two ounces of pear and a half ounce of Saint Germain. So two ounces pear vodka, pear in this case pear edelflower, one half ounce Saint Germain. And in this case I'll tell you what, I tasted that vodka, you could actually skip the Saint Germain if you don't want to get a whole other ingredient. Um, and this drink will still taste really, really good. So just a little kiss. It's very sweet, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, a little kiss of Saint Germain. Now, what we're basically doing is we're now going to be adding the equivalent of homemade sweet and sour mix. So again, we're going to be adding uh, organic trace agaves, agave nectar, and about three quarters of an ounce. We're gonna be adding about one ounce of lime juice, uh, which is very important. Um, again, having, you can buy store-bought lime, it's okay. Um, if you juice your own, it's much, much better. And in fact, I'll, uh, I'll show you the my juicer that I use, and, and I'll demonstrate on the next cocktail. Um, but yeah, so, um, lime and agave nectar, one ounce. I like so. And as always, we shake. So, into the cup. into a nice bucket. slight moderation on the recipe than the original, which was invented uh, at a bar in Hermosa Beach, California, called Palmilla. So if you want the original, go to uh, Palmilla in Hermosa Beach, California, for the real thing. Yeah. Salud. Wow. That's not quite exactly the same flavor, but man, that is a delicious drink. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. As I was saying, uh, this is what I use as a, to juice my limes or lemons. Uh, you can pick these up in most uh, supermarkets here in the United States, but a uh, very, very handy tool. Um, so, uh, 
So far we've had uh, three uh, variations on cucumber and jalapeno. Um, and we've had one uh, raspberry serrano and cilantro cocktail. Uh, what are we feeling like now? A mojito. Yes, one of the grandfathers of all the cocktails, which I believe was invented by, was it Hemingway? Something like that. I think it was Hemingway, one of those guys, um, down in Cuba. Uh, so this is a classic, and I love this beverage. Um, we're going to make it in the drink we drink it out of. <clears throat> uh, normally we have, um, you can have a taller or a smaller glass. I'm going to use a, a regular pint because most of us have uh, a regular pint glass at home. And I'm going to make it a little, a little strong, okay? Um, so, first thing we need to get our limes for muddling. You could just juice the lime into the glass, but no, no, no. Not for a mojito. You actually want to um, have the lime muddled with the, uh, the mint. So, I'm going to take half of one lime. Okay, that's four pieces. That's one half of a nice juicy lime. All right. I'm going to take mint. Now, notice this mint is I'm taking both leaves, both the leaves and the stems, okay? I'm getting them both. There's a lot of flavor in the stems uh, that I don't want to deny myself, or you. I don't want to deny you, frankly. Um, I'm going to put a little more mint because mint is life. Now, <clears throat> we are going to muddle. I'm just going to wipe this off. I do want this to have a cleaner muddle. So I'm going to have that like so. Okay. Now, um, before I muddle this, though, I am going to add uh, the sugar to it. Now, you can either add um, about a tablespoon of regular white sugar, uh, or you can add about one ounce of uh, simple syrup. Uh, I'm going to be using one ounce of my um, organic cane sugar uh, simple syrup. Um, I'm adding that first before the muddling process. I think it makes a better mixture. Okay. So we have about one ounce of our uh, simple syrup in here. And again, with the mojito, the muddling to me is very important. In fact, I'm going to use the soft end for this cocktail. Um, I, I don't want to pulverize the leaves. I want the leaves to be, uh, I want to break the veins in the leaf, uh, but I don't want to pulverize the leaf, right? So what that means is I'm going to be doing a firm, slow press, but I'm not going to smash things up, okay? Firm, slow press, yeah. I want the limes to juice. I want the mint to break, but I don't want the leaves to tear. And I want the stems to break, and I want that fragrance to be released. And I can literally smell it from here already. This is why this is one of the, the grandfathers of all cocktails. So you have a mixture that looks like this, okay? Um, now you can muddle before or after adding the, the sugar or the simple. I do like adding it uh, before, but either way, you're going to still make a really good cocktail as long as everything's fresh. Now, of course, uh, with a mojito, the next ingredient is the rum. I always like to add my ice first. <clears throat> The ice melting is actually an important part of making the drink taste correct. Now, normally, if you go to a bar and you get a mojito, 
always make sure you have a good, uh, clean, white rum. Uh, Bacardi is fine. The nice thing about Bacardi is it's also generally pretty inexpensive. You know, you can get a bottle of Bacardi um, for twelve, fifteen dollars, um, and it's fine. It works great for cocktails. I don't know if I'd want to sip on Bacardi as a as a sipper, but as a cocktail mixer, delicious. And I'm gonna add about three ounces to this drink. Okay, I told you I'm making it a little stronger. This is a house pour. Okay, so about three ounces here. Right. Three ounces of Bacardi. And now we give it a shake, a good old fashioned shake. ingredient uh, for this cocktail is club soda. So to touch your club soda. Top it off. And of course we give this a little stir. Garnished with mint and a lime and that my friends is a mojito so absolute grandfather of a drink in the best way shape or form it is a classic and uh when they're made well they're just oh they're heavenly cheers Man, that's good. Salud. <laughs> and how's everything going? Good. Yeah. You feeling a little bit more relaxed, I would imagine, a little more. A little more loose. And uh, hopefully having some nice warm fuzzies by now. But not too much. Not too much. Um, well, I think uh, it's appropriate to finish off the evening with one of my all-time favorites, um, an old-fashioned. Now, there are some who, uh, who always muddle an old-fashioned, some never. Um, I think, you know, it's a personal preference. I happen to like a lightly, lightly muddled old-fashioned, um, and that's controversial. Some would say absolutely not. That is sacrilege. Um, and you can really go either way with it. Um, I'll show you the muddled way. And you don't have to do this. Uh, but I do like the, the, the extra fruit sensation. Okay. Take some orange. Okay. Uh, let some peel off it. But that's because I peeled it. And we're just going to uh, get a little slice. Okay. Just a very simple orange slice. <clears throat> I'm going to cut it in half. And place it in the bottom of my glass. Along with one uh, classic uh, cocktail cherry. Not the crazy red maraschino, whatever those things are. No, uh, this is a, uh, a true classic cocktail cherry, uh, which you can get at a store like a Bevmo. Now, I am going to lightly, lightly bottle this. Again, I'm not trying to destroy anything. I am just breaking up the juice a little, little bit. Notice, not crushing or pulverizing anything. All I have done, okay, is just released the essence of the orange rind and 
just broken up that cherry a little bit. There's like a little bit of liquid in the bottom of the glass now. Okay, that's where a lot of flavor is going to come from. And now I add the famous round ice cube, which you can make in your own freezer at home. Okay, nice big round ice cube. All right. Now, next. <clears throat> are you a bourbon person? Are you a rye person? Um, there's no right answer, okay? Rye is wonderful. Um, I think it's great. I happen to prefer bourbon uh, many times in my old fashions. Uh, and in this case, uh, we're going to do it with uh, Maker's Mark uh, 46, which is... Um, a quasi special release, um, but it's uh, it's just a lovely uh, Kentucky bourbon. It's this is 94 proof, so it's a little stronger uh, than normal. But uh, yeah, the next ingredient uh, that's very important is a uh, Angostura bitters. Now, um, you know, any kind of bitters, Angostura, old fashioned bitters, they're all the same thing. Um, but we're going to take a little bitters, and we're just going to give about uh, two or three squirts, just like that, okay? Not too much. And now we're going to add our bourbon, and again, this is for a house pour. Um, I'm going to do three ounces. Um, this is, yeah, you understand why. And now, as Frank Sinatra said, you gotta let it lay down. Okay. Oh, actually, I forgot one thing. You can either do a sugar or a little tiny bit of simple syrup. Now, that is also controversial. Um, that's why I like using the muddled orange, um, is that it's, uh, when I have the orange and the cherry on the bottom down there, okay, um, they, uh, act as the sugar, uh, in the drink. So I'm just stirring it to melt a little bit of the ice, to give it a little bit of water, and let's give this a taste. Salud. Man, <sighs> that is so good. I don't know if I would change anything, but if I was going to, here's how I would make it the other way. Okay, now for those of you who thought it might have been sacrilegious to muddle uh, an old fashioned, uh, I will show you the traditional way of making an old fashioned, which is also truly heavenly. Uh, we will take our uh, large ice cube and place it in our glass like so. We will take our bitters and do two or three dashes. One, two, three. Three dashes of our bitters. We will add a little bit of sugar, just a little bit of sugar in this case. We're gonna go that's it, about a half ounce. I don't like too much sugar in my cocktail. And now, we begin the stirring process. You can use whatever you want. I'm using a knife, but you could use a cocktail spoon or any kind of spoon. And now we're gonna add our bourbon. Again, house pour, three ounces. Four ounces if you wanna go crazy. Stir, stir, stir. You don't shake an old fashioned. You only stir an old fashioned. Some orange peel. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I don't want to twist it. If you want to get really fancy, you can light it on fire. <laughs> I'm not sure if that does anything other than look really cool, but I'm going to get a little bit of that orange zest, basically, into the cocktail. And last but not least, we will add our cherry to the top. And that is the other way of making a delicious old-fashioned so. Cheers, salute, and uh, may you have warm and fuzzy and happy dreams, my friends. Until the next time, cheers to you. I'm honestly not sure which one I like better. This is the first one. You can do no wrong. And until the next time, au revoir, like, and subscribe.